Good morning. Uh, today is Monday, September 9th, 2013, at about quarter of nine in the morning. And today is day three of my sugar withdrawal program. Um, so the drinks now have uh, 14 teaspoons of sugar in it. So uh, 14 times 4, or 40, uh, 56 milligrams of sugar, which is uh, still a little more than I used to get in my uh, big energy drinks. So I'm still starting off with a lot of sugar. Yesterday went pretty good. Um, I didn't have any uh, desserts, so it went pretty much the way I would like the program to go. Um, this was my primary sugar source. Uh, I drank uh, the drink is so sweet that I just drank little sips of it throughout the day, like little pieces of candy. I did supplement it with a little fruit, so I did have some extra sugar. Um, but, so roughly I got 14 and a half teaspoons of sugar. Uh, normally they say the average adult gets 22 teaspoons of sugar, which is way more than you're supposed to get. You're only supposed to get nine, nine teaspoons. And I did supplement it with some sugar, so I'm I, I'm probably getting a little less sugar than I would normally get in uh, in a normal day, but I'm still getting way more sugar than you're supposed to get. And this morning, this is my second video, my first video screwed up, I really was looking forward to a, a sugar hit, so I think I am getting a little less sugar than I normally get. So I'm very much looking forward to that sugar hit, but when I taste it, it is very sweet. So I just take little sips of this throughout the day. Okay, so I'm on the program. Everything seems to be going good, and we'll see how it goes uh, going forward. I'm not expecting to have any major withdrawal effects like I did in the caffeine program, but it remains to be seen. Um, my digestion has been a little bit off the last couple of days. I think just because I'm doing something, I'm changing my diet somewhat. But it seems to be settling down, and uh, you know, I, th I think I should be able to carry through with this program. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about uh, just basics of nutrition. Um, uh, I mean, fundamentally, there are three kinds of foods that you're supposed to be eating. There's fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. And uh, for example, you know, proteins are animal fats, or I'm sorry, proteins are like um, meat, um, you know, chicken or beef or uh, fish. Um, you know, certain nuts have pro protein in it. Um, fats are oils, canola, canola oil, vegetable oil. Um, uh, certain fish have fats. I mean, animals have fats. I mean, junk foods have fat in it. And then in the carbohydrate camp, you have grains, fruits and vegetables, and, uh, you know, pastas and bread and things like that. And, you know, to have a healthy di diet, you're supposed to have a certain fraction of uh, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. And I personally don't even really think about it. I mean, I think I get enough of all of them. I think I just probably overeat is my issue. I'm a meat eater, so I eat you know, plenty of protein. Um, in terms of fats, I, you know, there's fat in meat and, you know, I eat junk food occasionally and, you know, fried foods and stuff. So I'm definitely getting enough fat and protein and I'm definitely getting enough carbohydrates too because I try to eat a fair amount of fruits and vegetables and, you know, breads and pastas. I'm definitely getting a lot of that. So this whole series is concentrating on, of that slice, I think, of, of foods, of those the, all those foods, it's concentrating on the carbohydrate slice. Um, and carbohydrates, as I said before, are fruits and vegetables, um, grains, you know, breads and pastas and things like that. And carbohydrates provide um, the body basically sugar, uh, sugars, which are the fuel of the body. Uh, basically. They get broken down into glucose and other simple sugars, but the primary one is glucose. And glucose gets into your uh, bloodstream and basically feeds the cells of the body and is like the food of the body uh, to produce energy. And when glucose gets into the, 
into the bloodstream, there's another thing that you need to know about called insulin um, that gets produced by the pancreas and um, is a hormone that allows glucose to be uh, used or utilized by the cell. It basically unlocks, unlocks the cells of the body so the glucose can, can get in there. So when you eat carbohydrates, they get converted to glucose. Um, insulin gets produced and allows that um, glucose to enter into the cell and also to store the extra glucose as fat. So, you know, that's the way it normally works. And you, you typically want to have a stable uh, level of glucose in your system. And the way nature was originally designed, I mean, when you normally get your carbohydrate sources, sources, fruits and vegetables and, you know, whole grains and things like that, the body normally needed to work to get, to convert that stuff to glucose. And the glucose slowly got introduced into your bloodstream. And, you know, as it got in there, insulin would get produced and it would all be sort of a, a slow process. Now, one of the problems with sugars, many refined uh, carbohydrates and grains and things, and particularly sugar, is mankind over the past several hundred years has figured out a way to sort of strip away the work required to get this glucose and has created things like refined sugar, which when you consume it, it almost gets con immediately converted into glucose uh, in your body. And this causes basically a spike in your blood sugar, which makes you feel good. It releases a lot of feel good hormones in your body like um, endorphins and serotonin and things like that. Because your body's so excited to be getting all this energy all, all at once. But over time, this is a very bad thing, supposedly, for your body because you're getting spikes of the sugars going into your body. It's quickly getting absorbed. Insulin is quickly being produced to get it into the body. And your blood sugar goes up. You start feeling really good and then it sort of crashes and it goes down. So you get this cycle where your blood sugar goes way up and way down. And first of all, it affects your mood and you know, you get high and low and high and low, which isn't that good and causes stress. But over time, uh, I guess my understanding is that this is a very bad thing over you know years and decades and it can lead to diabetes and something called metabolic syndrome and a lot of problems with maintaining your blood sugar. So the current thinking is you don't want to have these spikes in blood sugar. And one of the words that you're going to hear is something called the glycemic index. Um, certain carbohydrates, and particularly refined carbohydrates, if they quickly break down into glucose, it has a high glycemic index. It causes a blood sugar spike. So typically you want things with lower glycemic index. Um, so this whole series is uh, converting uh, concentrating on this refined carbohydrate called sugar. And I'm trying to minimize that because I don't want those spikes in my blood sugar. I don't know if I explained that very well, but there's, that's one whole theory about why sugar is bad. There's a whole nother theory that's recent. Um, actually, let me start up again. Sorry about that. So there's this whole, um, secondary theory about why sugar is bad for you and it's related to uh, the fact that sugar and high fructose corn syrup contain uh, another simple sugar called fructose which is now considered or considered by some to be extremely dangerous um, even toxic to the body it's something that was uh, brought forth about four years ago by a guy, a guy named Robert Lustig uh, from California and I'm going to devote tomorrow's uh, session to that. So thanks for watching, and I will talk to you tomorrow.